Yo, E. First, I want to say thank you for all your wisdom that you share with me at the Protectors Summit. The stones really humbled me when I wasn't able to lift them this year when I could last year. I was very humbled at this Protectors Summit and have now been working with a personal trainer since I've been back and I've been killing it. Appreciate the humility that led to an even, great, even greater development. Humility is everything, bro. Uh, he says, my question pertains to my fourth grounding class that I'm hosting with my men's development tribe uh, this coming Saturday. 20 men will be attending and I'm feeling deeply blessed by our creator to be able to bring this work to so many incredible men. What's your advice in making grounding classes with bioenergetics, dynamic meditation, and breath work most effective? And do you have any advice moving forward for the development of my future events and grounding class? So a few things comes to me. Come to me. Number one, and everything I'm going to say is an, the umbrella is structure, structure, boundaries, form, right? They're all kind of the same thing, right? Form is structure, right? My body's structured in a form. And there's boundaries between me and this table. Structure, boundaries, form. But you have many different types. You've got four if you're dealing with the quadrated psyche, right? With, I mean, this is, this is, you could describe it in a neo Jungian perspective, but you could also describe it in, in a Christian perspective. But there's, there's in essence, four, right? You've got your body, you've got the mind, you've got the soul, and you've got spirit, right? And when I say soul, I'm thinking the heart, right? You've got mag warrior, magician, lover, king. King, warrior, magician, lover. You've got these four aspects, thinking, feeling, being, doing. So fascinating how this number four is. That's definitely my, if, if I believe in spirit numbers <laughs> which i don't but i do believe that there's some patterns we live in a fractal world and there are definitely patterns there's some mathematical patterns to our world there's no question about that and this number four right so there are four aspects that you want to bring that those boundaries to that structure to let's talk with the most superficial physical structure whatever you're doing I've learned this. This is the first thing I learned by doing classes, especially these classes that are very dynamic. It's a lot of, you're, you're doing a lot of crazy stuff. You need a strong schedule and it needs to be, right? None of this, oh, we'll start around this time. Or you tell people to start at a certain time and they come late or you come late. None of that. I've seen guys do this. With other kinds of events, maybe that's okay for them. But when you're doing something where you're unleashing a lot of chaos, bioenergetics, breath work, dynamic meditation is chaos. If you're doing something where there's a lot of chaos, you need that much more rigor with your time. Time stamps on everything and stick to your schedule. That's number one. Let's talk about Let's talk about, let's bring the other three together, right? Because I, I don't know how to differentiate them, but I'm going to put them all under one umbrella. So the first thing is physical, and then we'll talk metaphysical, right? If you have to break it down, right? Physical is what you can touch. The rest is like, it's mental, spiritual, and emotional. There needs to be spiritual boundaries, as I mentioned in a video I made not too long ago, or a talk that I had with you guys in regards to people using psychedelics. They don't, if, the, if there is no, if there isn't a prayerful environment, if there isn't spiritual protection, there, things can go sideways. Because in a lot of ways, you're opening up the unconscious. You're, you're, you, I don't think we can take these things too lightly. Because you're dealing with people's emotions. When you're doing bioenergetics and dynamic meditation, and you breathe yourself into this, this place, a lot of what's been held back by our body, those boundaries open up, right? Heavy breathing breaks boundaries, right? All you got to do, if you just imagine, this is why I stopped doing it with women. If you just have a woman 
laying there with you or laying, you know, and this is why I don't, I never invite, I stopped inviting women to these classes and stuff and because, the, because people couldn't handle it because the boundaries were open. Just imagine a woman, a beautiful girl doing this. All the guy, everybody is, everybody's getting hot. That just shows you that spiritual, emotional boundaries are broken through the physical. Breath work breaks boundaries, and people go crazy. They were, and you know, I don't want to tell too many tales, but there were a lot of things that were happening at my camp when I had women there that I was not happy about. I was like, these guys, they can't control themselves because there's all this breathing and, and going on, and these women, and then people become soft when their ego breaks down. They become, I, I'm going to use the word vulnerable. The ego breaks down through all that breathing. You become vulnerable. You become soft. And both men and women, they get soft. And you might notice, like with your classes too, if it's all men, even when we were doing all men, after all the breathing and stuff, even the guys would get soft with each other. That's why, they, you know, people like to make me out to be like I'm so hardcore, but they don't realize the kind of work that I, I do with men. It softens men up. When a man breaks his boundaries, especially if he's very rigid, through a lot of these things, he becomes soft. And like, you know, all the guys walk in and a lot of them are tough guys. But by the end of the event, they're hugging each other. And it's like, it's not, it's not sexual, but they're soft with each other and hugging each other and like, you know, crying with each other and stuff. And it's nice, but there need to be boundaries, right? Keeping the, keeping the time is very, is very much important. But I would even say, Begin and end with prayer, right? Begin with a prayer. Here's a prayer I've been memorizing that I, maybe I'll even begin these classes with it. I don't know. I got to decide. But you should memorize this and pray this prayer, maybe to yourself, but also to them. I love this. I learned it from Father Ripperger by listening to his, uh, the lectures on spiritual warfare. It goes, direct, O Lord, all of our actions by thy holy inspiration and carry them on by thy gracious assistance so that every prayer and action of ours proceeds th uh oh now i'm losing it proceeds through thee and by thee finds completion in christ our lord direct o lord all of our actions by thy holy inspiration carry them on by thy gracious assistance so that every Prayer and work of ours proceeds through thee and by thee finds completion in Christ our Lord. Amen. Right? So in other words, in other words, you prepare yourself with humility. You ask God for guidance, inspiration, protection, and completion. That's a worthy prayer, especially if you're in a state of grace and you, ask, and you, and you pray with humility. That's a worthy prayer to memorize before you go into these classes. Mental and emotional boundaries, you know, here's another way to maintain those mental and emotional boundaries. Have silent time. See, when there's a lot of this dynamic, wild work going on, you can burn out very quickly and you know and I know everybody knows that you are most susceptible when you're burnt out. You're most susceptible to weak. You become weak when you're burnt out. You're more easily attacked when your guards are down. So one of the ways to one of the most important things and I did a lot of this in my grounding camps when I did them. We had a lot of processing time, a lot of processing time. That means quiet space, space in between. Not yip, yap, chatting time, right? You're going to have a lot of guys that, you know, they want to talk. You know, a lot of guys act like women, but, you know, I'm not knocking anybody. This is, this is the world we live in. They want to talk and they can't help themselves. They want to chat. They want to make friends. It's like, hey, okay, cool. There's a time for fellowship. There's a time for fellowship. This is not it. This is silent time. That means you go out and you allow the guys to walk around or sit under a tree or just lay down somewhere by yourself and process. You can also make yourself available, right? Part of the reason, listen, man, this is what you're doing. It's tough work. 
And you will discover this as you go along. I did it for five years. I think I did close to 20 or more rounding hands, maybe 25 or 30. Um, guys are going to come to you because they're going to need help processing. And if you are not in a state of grace, you are not grounded yourself, you're going to have a hard time dealing with everything that they are laying on you. One of the things I learned also is that you have to be the space holder. You can't do the stuff with the guys. In the beginning, I used to do the stuff with the guys because I thought, oh, well, we're in it together. I'm going to do it together. Then that's like, you know, we talked about uh, ayahuasca trips, right? You don't want to go do these psychedelic drugs with somebody else who's on psychedelic drugs, right? I don't, I'm not advising psychedelic drugs at all. But you don't want to go and, and do it with somebody who's doing it too. When they're dealing with you in these, in these environments, you don't do the bioenergetics. You don't do the dynamic meditation. They do it, you hold the space. Because you need to be like the rock. So when they become ungrounded or they need to process, they could come to you and you're not like <sighs> all over the place yourself. I had to learn that. I didn't know that. I used to think, oh, I need to do it. But no, you don't. It's better that you don't. So anyway, so these are just a few bits of wisdom from my experience doing what I see you doing. And I think it's pretty cool, dude. Keep going. Just keep these things in mind. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. My team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me. So DM me the word King on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.